Hello, hello. You are here to get record ready. You are here to take charge of your creative process. Welcome to Vocal Recording Simplified. I'm Kimara, and I'm stoked to walk you through this process and help you see what you're really capable of. My learn to record journey started in 2005 when I went to a university and double majored in music and sound recording and music business. In four years, we spent all of one day focused on vocals. Yes, a lot of the concepts we'll be going over were brought up in school, but they were taught in such a detailed and tangential way that just went over my head. I think my biggest key takeaway from college was how to mic drums, which is something I literally have never needed to do since. I've never once had to whip out binary code, reroute a patch bay, or take a razor to edit analog two-inch tape. I don't think you will either. So that's why I'm happy to bring you Vocal Recording Simplified because we are going to dig into all the relevant stuff that just singers and rappers need. And we are going to get to the fun part as soon as possible. I wasn't even given studio access in college until my junior year. You're about to be running your own sessions, editing your own vocals, just how you like. So you don't have to wait on anyone else's schedule anymore. Your savings will start to stack up because you don't need to book studio time anymore. And actually, possibly even the exact opposite. Instead of spending money on recording, I want to see you making money to record. Yeah, this could be the start of a lucrative business for you, and I can definitely help you set that up as well. But first, let's get you recording vocals that are to industry standard. And by the end of this program, you absolutely will be ready to go to market and start accepting paid clients for your recording skills. So here's what to expect. This is a two-part program. First, we're going to get your studio set up. You're going to learn how to use Pro Tools, our recording software which is also known as a DAW or D-A-W, that stands for a Digital Audio Workstation. Almost everyone in the industry will agree that Pro Tools is the best software for vocals and mixing, period. Logic, Ableton, Cubase, Fruity Loops, all great software that you absolutely can record in, but those are better for producing instrumentals. Fun fact, I actually do produce instrumentals in Pro Tools. So by the end of part one, you'll know your way around Pro Tools, you'll be recording the right way, and we'll transition into part two, which is vocal production. That is the art of making your vocals sound incredible with certain performance techniques, advanced editing, tuning, mixing, and special effects. I do recommend to do this course in order, but if you browse ahead and you see a lesson you really want to skip to, feel free. Now, I want to hold you accountable, though. There is definitely a difference between pacing it and procrastinating. I understand you're busy. We're all busy. But if you can block out a minimum of one hour per week, you'll be able to make good progress. So I challenge you to assign a specific day or days and times that you are going to clock in and work on this program. Keeping a regular schedule with it will help you stay accountable. While you're here, I put all of the supplemental material into one easy zip folder, and that will be everything you need to download. Throughout the program, if you have any big questions or run into any troubleshooting issues, you can leave a comment right below these videos. This is actually super helpful to everyone else who might have the same questions as you, so don't be shy, drop your questions, and I'll come in and answer them. All right, without further ado, Let's dive into the work. Studio setup. First thing on the list is a computer. I'm sure you have one. So the second thing on the list is an external hard drive. The reason you need that is because A, it takes your computer a lot of energy just to run its software and all of the plugins, but then also to store all the audio as you're recording is also a lot of work. And eventually your computer will just become full. What you want to do is open your sessions on an external hard drive. What will be happening is your computer will write all of the new files that it creates through Pro Tools onto this hard drive, which will take a lot of the pressure off of your computer and you will be running faster and smoother without interruptions. These are my obvious favorite, of course with an adapter because Apple always updates their ports whenever I get a new computer. This is the Samsung T5 solid state drive. Solid state meaning it doesn't have any like fans or wheels spinning inside, which makes it more durable because I like to take my hard drives when I travel or I even just like to like unplug them and go work on my laptop on the couch. Moving an external hard drive that has moving parts inside will probably lead 
to a breakdown. You probably know someone, if not yourself, who has experienced a hard drive shutdown. I have never experienced that with this hard drive. So I highly, highly recommend it. Next biggest piece you're gonna need, recording software, AKA your digital audio workstation, DAW, I use Pro Tools. We're gonna be focusing on Pro Tools in this course. Pro Tools does have a free version. It's got a lot of limitations. It's very much like the GarageBand version of Logic. If you want, you can definitely start with the free version, but as I'm showing you stuff, you might be like, hmm, I don't have that feature. I do recommend just going for it and buying the full version. They have an annual subscription version, or you might still be able to find perpetual licenses on third-party providers. That is what I do. The benefit of the subscription is that every time there's an update, you get it. However, they charge you every year. I don't love that. I think I can go a few years with one version without upgrading. So I went for the perpetual license, which I was able to get through Sweetwater. Okay, our next part of the conversation is a microphone, of course. For vocals, for singing, a condenser mic is great. I personally use a tube microphone called the Manly Studio Reference. This is my old Rhodes NT1A, which is very popular at a decent price point. It did really well for me for a long time. To pair with your microphone, you're going to need a microphone cable, which is also known as an XLR cable. Fun fact, that helps me remember without having to be like looking which end goes in is the mic is always male. Not even have to look, the mic is male, so. Boom. What else goes with the microphone? A mic stand. You need to put it on a stand. You do not want to be recording like this. It will pick up your motion. It will not give you a good sound. There are tons of mic stands and they all work. The only thing I definitely recommend is getting a boom style as opposed to a straight mic stand. A straight mic stand you might see in live performances. It's literally just up and down, but this will give you more flexibility. If you're sitting or standing in a different way, you can adjust adjust it and move it around. Another biggie on my list is the pop filter. This is my favorite. It's the Hakan Gooseneck. It's very flexy. This is another option. It's like a nylon. Basically what it's doing is whenever you say a word that starts with a P, notice P or a T sound. Basically consonants like P that are plosive, meaning a lot of air goes into the mic and how that translates is often a very ugly P sound. This pop filter will catch some of that air, make it sound like you're just normally speaking. Next is the interface. It will enable your microphone and your speakers to speak to Pro Tools. This is an example. I do like this. It's the Presonus. Basically any interface is going to have mainly the same stuff. You don't need anything too crazy. As long as you have a microphone input, a 48 volt button. This is also known as phantom power. This needs to be engaged. If you are using a condenser microphone, which you most likely will get, this needs to be on where you will not hear any sound. Condenser microphone needs 48 volt button on. Any other microphone, off. One thing to be aware of is the difference between mic and line. Those are both inputs. A microphone input means you're plugging a microphone into it. A line input means you're plugging something with a quarter inch cable, looks like this. This is a quarter inch adapter for my headphones, but this is the kind of plug you will plug like a guitar directly in. This is a universal style input, so you can actually plug either a mic XLR cable or a quarter inch cable into it. Sometimes the interface and your DAW will communicate automatically when you have a microphone plugged in, but sometimes it won't, and you'll need to tell it whether or not you're using a mic or a line. This button says line on it. I don't know if you can see, which means means that this defaults as microphone, and if you're using it as a line, push this button. Every interface will also have the plugs for your headphones and for your speakers. So basically think of this as the interface to what's going
going in and what sound is coming out. So the sound that's going in to this machine into your computer is from the microphone. What's coming out of this is coming out of your computer, going through these out to your headphones, or they're going out your speakers, which in the recording studio we call monitors, not to be confused with a computer monitor screen, which is also known as a monitor. But when we say the monitors in studio, we're talking about the speakers. Headphones are only one jack. Monitors, we treat them separately. So you have one plug coming from the left and one coming from the right. This one has MIDI in and outs. I don't think we need that. That's gonna be useful when you have like old outboard gear. Outboard gear is a term for basically analog, old school compressors, synthesizers, EQs, things like that. For the most part, I only use digital gear. So as you can see, my studio setup is really basic and it's perfect because all I do is record vocals. Two more main parameters we need to talk about on the interface. One is your volume for your headphones. There's a headphone icon here. So if your headphones are too loud or quiet, turn them up or down. And then this one just says main. Main is gonna mean monitors. The other knobs that are the most important knobs are the input gain knobs. On different interfaces, you will see different things. On this one, all I see is the number one and the number two. That's based on whether I'm using the microphone Microphone input one or input two. So if I'm using microphone input one, I'm gonna adjust this knob one, then I will watch the meter in Pro Tools to see the level. We'll get into that in a minute. It will also possibly be labeled as gain or it will be labeled as input. That's it for the interface. Headphones are absolutely essential to recording. If you recorded without headphones and you left your speakers on so you could hear the music that you're singing along to, that sound would go into the microphone too. We can't have that. So you need to have headphones on when you're recording and you need the monitors to be off so the mic doesn't pick up that sound. Uh, one thing I need you to do, and this is debated and I want to squash the debate right now and say, you will sing better or your singer will sing better if they have one headphone off. I always keep one headphone off. And the reason is there is latency almost all the time. So when you sing into the microphone, what comes through your ear is a microsecond later. You just cannot hear yourself that well. When you have one headphone off, you can actually think about hearing your voice right here coming at the mouth into the ear. It's not traveling through a bunch of equipment and then coming through digitally. Most headphones end up looking like this. This is an eighth inch cable, but interfaces are always gonna be quarter inch cable inputs. If you really are on a small budget, you can definitely get some really cheap headphones. As long as you have that quarter inch adapter, it will work. Definitely most ideal to use recording studio headphones because they'll be what is called closed backed. Not much sound will escape from the back of the headphone. Beats by Dre's or just like your regular JVC headphones will probably bleed out. So having really well padded and covered headphones, I like to give it a good press to my head so that the headphone that's off isn't just open and like exposing sound to the microphone. When you have too much headphone bleed, it's harder to fine tune edit the vocal. It really muddies up the mix. And one thing it can also cause is called phasing. When you have two audio files of the same audio on top of each other, it's two audio files fighting for the same space and it just sounds super wonky and weird. Speakers are another thing that is definitely essential to recording, it is doable to not have speakers and to do your whole mix in the headphones. And then, you know, take an MP3 to your car, write some notes down and then go back inside and fix it. You can do that getting started and that is totally fine. But you're definitely gonna wanna get proper monitors. I love my Yamaha HS8s. I've had these since 2012 and they're still kicking. One thing that's really important in the studio is cable management. You've seen it before where cables can get all tangled up. This is called the electrician's wrap. You don't wanna do that. It gets to be a mess. Improperly wrapped cables could shorten the life of your cable as the wires inside could become damaged. So proper way to wrap a cable. Your left hand holds it stationary. Your right hand is going to pull and twist as you twist, it becomes a nice loop. 
And then you just keep wrapping, trying to keep your loops the same size. There's another method called the over under method. I don't use it, but it's very good for when you're on tour and you're wrapping cables, when you're on the stage setting up and you throw, you hold one end and throw them across the stage. Apparently they will just uncoil so lovely and easily. But yeah, try to keep all of your cables nice and neat 